and illustrate the some of the big differences here um, looking between a Sport 1000-2000 and this uh, Pro plugin. So if we jump up here into our ECU Navigator, we're going to notice looking at the first kind of major difference between a Sport box and a Pro plugin that's going to be vehicle specific. Now this is going to be again for an S2000 has a VTEC function. So we're going to have both a low and high cam operation. We're going to find that we have a VE table associated with our low cam as our base table here. It's our low cam VE table. And then we're going to have our high cam table when it switches over to the VTEC lobe. We're going to have our base VCT switched on. That's going to represent the high cam operation. We're going to find that we have the same thing for ignition timing. We have our base table for our low cam and then a base VCT switched on for our high cam operation. So setting these tables up is going to be very straightforward. And it's going to only switch over to these high cam tables when it meets the conditions that we program for our VTEC activation. So if we go up to setup, main setup here, we jump into our outputs and we look here at our VCT switched. It has to meet the conditions that we program here in order for the tables to switch over. So if we jump back into the tables here, we're going to find that the breakpoints on the tables could definitely be optimized or re-optimized uh, to make it a little bit simpler to look at. We don't need this much resolution. It's going to have a ton of resolution here. We know on our, our, our low cam operation, we're not going to be taking out to 10,000. And, and in fact, we're not going to be going over 9,000. Realistically, we're really not going to be going over even 8,000 RPM. So if we could rescale the breakpoints in this table and shrink our table down a little bit in resolution and still not lose any of the drivability resolution as we find in the table uh, down in the lower RPM levels. So I could go up to my setup, my table setup here, I could go ahead and take out some of this breakpoints on the top end so we can get rid of 10,000 using this delete function 9,500, take out 9,000, take out 8,500. Click apply, click OK, and that's re-updated my table now. And now I have my breakpoints from 0 to 8,000 RPM for my low cam operation. We can see the table is a little bit smaller, a little bit easier to deal with, and it's still going to be accurate having our breakpoints shrunk down because we're really not going to be having our low cam operation much past 8,000 or even close to 8,000 RPM. So we're going to do the same thing for our high cam table. We jump in here, we go see it goes all the way to 10,000. But what we have to keep in mind is we're not going to have our VTEC operation much below 3,500. So the breakpoints on the bottom end of this table are a waste. And we're definitely not going to be going out to 10,000 and we could get rid of that breakpoint. So we could shrink this high cam table down and not really lose any resolution in the table. So if I go to setup, my table setup, I'd go ahead and start deleting this lower RPM points here. I'd use this delete function. So I'd start deleting them down and I'd leave 3,500. I'm going to delete them all the way up to until I get to 3,500 breakpoint. And then I'm going to go to my 10,000 RPM and delete that as well. Click apply, click OK. And now I've shrunk my table down, but my table starting at 35, I might have my VTEC as low as maybe 36. And I'm going to take my engine out to 9,000. So I have a little bit of room up on top above that in case I bump my engine RPM up. So now I have a VE table that's going to be a little bit simpler, but I'm not going to be losing any resolution in my operation, actual operation range of this table. So what I like to do here is set my breakpoints for my fuel table the same as the ignition table.